Good afternoon, Grey Danes, and welcome to Functions 4, the most important micro lesson in the Functions unit. In this unit, we are going to learn how to write a function rule from just a set of inputs and outputs. For example, in the table below, we have inputs and we have outputs, but we're missing the rule. And so somehow, some way, we're going to need a strategy to figure out a mathematical rule that joins these inputs and outputs. The first step in our process of writing this rule will be to organize the information. And one of the best ways to see the information is to organize it into a table. We're going to start with the inputs over here, and they're going to go across the top row. It's very, very important as we do this, we always start with negative or the lowest numbers first, and we go to the biggest numbers over here. If you don't put the numbers in order, you can end up with a very, very bad situation when you write the common difference for this rule. So if we look carefully, we'll see I brought all of these inputs into the input row. I'm now going to put the corresponding output over here in this row, and it's really important that it matches up with its partner input. So over here we see the inputs and outputs partnered together, and now what I'm going to do is just write those partner numbers here, making sure I don't make any mistakes in this process. In the next step, I need to look for a pattern, but I'm only going to look at outputs. This is really, really important. And you need to always be disciplined and make sure you're looking at the outputs of the function, not the inputs. If I look carefully here, as I move from place to place in the inputs, I can see that my pattern is increasing by two each time. And this looks really familiar. It looks like work we did in the previous chapter, where we had number patterns. And actually, to relate it to that work we did before, we could say that the inputs are like the ends from number patterns, and the outputs are like TNs. And if that helps you to better understand the topic, you can use that to assist you. With number patterns, we learned a very nice formula, and it's going to work here as well, but we're going to change some of the letters. With number patterns, we learned that TN is equal to the common difference times N plus C, I'm going to start by changing this equation slightly because now instead of n we have x and instead of t n we have f of x. So that's going to change. So we get f of x equals the common difference times x plus c. We still need to change this slightly because we are using the topic of functions and later we're going to graph these functions. So we're going to change this now to f of x is equal to mx plus c. Don't let this confuse you too much. These are basically the same thing, but they use different names for different situations. So to recap on a page with a bit more space, we have a table of inputs and outputs. Because we're using functions, we're going to use a rule f of x equals mx plus c, which is very similar to what we did in the previous chapter where we used tn. And we noticed before on the previous page that the common difference is 2. But now instead of calling it CD for common difference, we're now going to call it M. It's just a naming thing that you have to get used to. Now, for the little bit difficult part, but we've done this before. What you're going to do is you're going to look at the table and pick any input and output pair. I'm going to choose the pair with the zero because it usually means I do a little bit less calculating work. So in this pair, my x value is zero, and my f of x value is minus two. Those are the two numbers that go together. And I'm now going to substitute and then figure out my value for c. So I'm going to substitute in minus 2 is going to go in for f of x and 0 is going to go in for 
x. If I work this out, I'm going to get negative 2 equal to c. I'm now ready to write my final rule. And in order to write the final rule, I'm going to put all of the parts together. So the final rule will be f of x equals 2x minus 2. And that's all there is to it. Now pause the video and try to come up with the function rule on your own. All right, here we go. So with the function rule, we're going to first check the numbers and make sure that they are in the correct order from least to greatest. If they're not, it can cause big problems when we find the common difference. Next, we're going to find the common difference by looking at the outputs, the f of x's. And when we do that, if we look very, very carefully, we're going to see that each and every time as we move from one number to the next, we're decreasing by 3. So the common difference here is going to be minus 3. In the next step, we are now going to use the formula and start substituting things into the formula. Remember, the common difference in this formula is now the letter M, and that minus 3 is going to be substituted in for the value of M. In the next step, we are going to choose two numbers in our sequence. In this case, I often use the 0 for x, and whatever comes out is the output. So I'm going to choose that again, 0 for x and minus 3 for f of x and substitute that information back into the formula. And in doing that, we find the value of c. The value of c is going to be minus 3. We are now ready to write the final rule, which is what we are trying to do. And we're going to take our time and very carefully rewrite all this information and get an answer of f of x is equal to minus 3x minus 3. Good luck, grade 8s. This is not an easy topic, and you might want to watch this video a few times in order to understand exactly what's going on.